Hello everyone. Uh, am I audible? Just signing in for this uh, live session. And uh, very special uh, thanks to both Rahul and Kamlesh. Uh, it's it's an absolute honor and absolute privilege uh, to be speaking on this platform. And. Uh, I think Rahul and Kamlesh started at around the same time uh, as I did. We were one of the first few uh, people to start off uh, our startups from the IMA batch of 2009-11. So I've been given a few pointers. I'll be speaking to you for around 10 minutes uh, and uh, I hope that this session would be useful for you. I know most of you are at that stage where uh, uh, you're making uh, that transition in life, uh, moving on from your current work experience or graduation levels, trying to get into a postgrad program and expecting uh, what will happen after that. Uh, just a disclaimer and a caveat in the beginning, uh, everyone's style of working, everyone's uh, approach towards life uh, is very, very different and you've got to take a call on what you would like to do. And uh, so, my uh, experience is just you know one of the experiences which are there and if you can pick up any positives i'll be more than happy but you've got to chart out your own uh, path based on what you like so i'll just start off uh, with uh, the initial set of guidelines given to me so how is life different before mba during mba and after mba so i i I think life before MBA is obviously an amalgamation of a lot of things. I worked for a year uh, before I got into IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, I, like most other people uh, from the engineering background, wanted to uh, get in as soon as possible. Uh, I did secure uh, a good percentile and uh, got four calls uh, from four IIMs uh, in my first uh, appearance, but I was not able to make it to any of the uh, I was not able to crack any of the interview calls, uh, which was a tough one for me because I got four calls and so did most of my batchmates from college. And uh, some of my people, uh, my friends and family advised me to give it another shot, uh, which was which is probably good in hindsight. Uh, I was not focusing on only cracking CAT while I was working, so my mind was diverted while I was working, which was uh, which was a good thing because I think I was uh, a little over obsessed like like many others. And uh, so uh, the next year after working, I uh, got two calls this time from Ahmedabad and uh, Koei Code and you know I was fortunate enough. I think I was, I was really lucky uh, to be able to make it to IIM Ahmedabad, uh, which is something which I had always dreamed about. Uh, and uh, it was a dream come true, of course. Uh, and I, I still find uh, that I was really lucky to make it uh, because there's, there's so many people who are absolutely talented and uh, it's, it was an absolute privilege. So it did change a lot. It was very task driven, uh, you know, when I was preparing for, for CAT, uh, which was probably needed. Uh, and uh, the idea was to get good composure for your uh, for your tests and then interviews the first time around. I think I, I over prepared. Uh, it was, uh, I think, getting into in depth of too much of everything. Where did I come from and how was it named and, you know, how many rivers flow there and just, you know, I think it was too much uh, and the second time around I was you know just myself and got lucky as I said and uh, you know was able to uh, uh, make it to uh, IIM Ahmedabad and uh, it was it was more towards cracking the paper making it to the institution and that was it now when that happened and I went uh, you know into IIM Ahmedabad uh, you know it was absolutely staggering uh, it was overwhelming and you know reality uh, began to set in uh, you know I I'm probably, uh, you know, academically not the brightest, but, you know, I, I find myself uh, above average and the first kind of test just, just took it away because, you know, here are these guys who are absolutely, uh, you know, if you just make one mistake and you would probably end up getting a very bad grade and I think we had eight or nine quizzes back to back and, you know, that kind of shook me in, in terms of, you know, what I was doing and I soon realized that, uh, you got to carve a niche for yourself. Uh, you know, if you try to compete in everything with everyone, uh, there'll be ev there, in every aspect there'll be someone who's better than you. 
and you've got to carve a niche for yourself uh, where you could probably differentiate yourself that was one of the bigger learnings which i got in the initial days and i became more cool and uh, collected about what was happening not immediately reacting to things which was my nature before an mba and that was a process and uh, setting your priorities i mean you've got 20 things to do in a day i mean even now and uh, you prioritize certain things you're able to do certain things but you're also able to make peace with uh, you know what exactly uh, uh, you are able to achieve and you know not be too harsh on yourself so these are a couple of learnings i picked up of course i tried to maximize the learning that was all due to uh, the the peer group i had uh, my batchmates my seniors and juniors and 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 the staff members and i tried to maximize my output from the stay there i stood for elections which was the first and you know was somehow uh, uh, you know got got favor from the batch and i actually represented uh, uh, this whole body which does consulting for I am the bus so that was a great experience it's like a mini startup of itself obviously in a cocooned and branded environment uh, so that's something uh, you know which I take away from I am the bus and post uh, MBA I think definitely what uh, uh, your MBA does and especially from uh, an esteemed institute like like I am the bus uh, it does give you the first platform the first entry into any place you go so even when I was working with Johnson and Johnson and in, during my internship uh, and you know when I was working uh, as a full-time person there for a year and even when I started off sporting ethos it was easy relatively easy for me to you know introduce myself and have that first conversation of course after that it's it's your application your hard work and what your content is uh, which which counts so you know that way it was good I think uh, my my experience at Johnson & Johnson I think the biggest takeaway was to be able to do some sales and marketing and added a lot of humility uh, you got to respect each person who's doing their job and uh, you know going through the entire sales cycle and you know looking at different uh, aspects traveling all around the country that helped uh, but i really wanted to start up as soon as possible now coming to my startup journey um, i was passionate about sport and uh, i was trying to find something which uh, i could uh, you know i always wanted to do something on my own and I had to be passionate about something which I which I followed, uh, and because I wanted to persevere, uh, you know, for my entire life for that cause. And as I kept researching while I was working, I realized that sport was the thing which would keep me going. And uh, you know, I started doing my research, and you know, uh, one of my batchmates had a you know, was a sports physiotherapist, and you know, I started looking at sports medicine and why most of the players at that time were going abroad to get their uh, injuries uh, treated. So. Uh, that was something which I stumbled upon and then I realized there was this big area of sports sciences of which sports medicine or injury management was just one part of it. So how do you actually develop an athlete, you know, exercise physiology and sports psychology, nutrition, strength and conditioning, it was very, very scientific. And, uh, you know, I took a break of couple couple of weeks, I was working in Bangalore at that point of time. I came back to Delhi, I visited stadiums and sports complexes, met parents, athletes, coaches. And I soon realized that a scientific approach was overall lacking, uh, you know, in our country. While our athletes are very talented and, you know, they're giving their best, uh, this was not letting them achieve their full potential. So I decided to uh, quit my job, uh, which, was, which was a very good experience. Uh, and um, then I thought I'd start off straight away. But, uh, you know, my mentor from, from my Ahmedabad, Professor Sunil Handa, he, he told me that I need to be really ready. So... Uh, once I quit, I spent uh, around three months just researching what I was trying to do in depth. I went to Australia, visited different cities, used LinkedIn as a platform where I got a lot of introductions, went to Italy also to study what were those sports science centers doing, what are the best practices and uh, how could we uh, you know, uh, look at uh, starting off at a good level in India. I was, I was lucky to find a set of people, set of experts who had studied abroad. Uh, in you know in different fields of sports sciences and had the sim had a similar vision uh, than uh, you know what I had and you know we decided to start up together so I registered the company in September 2012 uh, started looking for places so I was on my own and uh, you know started scouting for places by April 2000 so in fact today is we complete five uh, years of operations by April we are sub we actually started off uh, operations at Sporting Ethos at our current facility and uh, 
no i think it's been it's been fantastic because i'm doing what i like uh, there's nothing taking away from that i think that's what keeps me going uh, so the initial idea about doing what i really want to do i think uh, that was the right call and i still enjoy uh, every day and i'm looking forward to you know go to, go to uh, our center uh, there were of course a lot of problems uh, you know uh, as vivek has just you know asked in, in one of the questions uh, there are challenges which i face even till today i mean one of the biggest problems you can face which you have to deal with uh in the infrastructure we have uh, in india is electricity problems and water problems and manpower and resourcefulness so that's something which probably was 40% of you know what of what was occupying my time uh, just a second Yeah, uh, sorry about that. So, forty uh, percent of the time was spent on uh, logistics uh, earlier, and now it's probably ten to fifteen percent. My team is, uh, you know, more than equipped to handle it on a daily basis. So that's something which, uh, you know, so log. I mean, it's always been a challenge financially. I mean, I've I've had to forego uh, probably a lot of uh, opportunity costs in terms of the salaries, uh, which uh, you know, which I have had to forego, and uh, I think financially it's been quite tough. uh trying to make it uh, you know every month but i had the support of my team i had the understanding of my team where uh, you know they were understanding enough to kind of keep working with this concept we were very motivated to do things ethically to do it the right way and we still are and uh, you know that experience has really helped i mean athlete first is our motto so every athlete matters to us and athlete is the priority so whatever decisions we make is it's based on uh, whether it's important for the athlete or not so i think i am already close to the 10 minute mark uh, but my experience at sporting ethos i mean we what we do is basically it's a team of sports science experts and uh, you know on all the in all the disciplines which i have mentioned and uh, these experts include uh, sports doctors physiotherapists strength and conditioning trainers sports psychologists sports nutritionists we are adding new services like gait analysis we've added a performance recovery area i mean at at the elite level it's all about recovery so all those things we are adding uh, we are very research back we look at the latest international research and that's what we uh, you know establish with our athletes uh, we don't focus as much on the results as the processes and i think that that goes for our uh, you know for for life also sometimes uh, results don't come your way but you got to be doing the right things every day you are setting the right process goals for yourself so that's what we do with our athletes i mean as long as they're hydrating sleeping well going about their practice not doing too much not doing too little uh um, you know just following a plan uh, you know what they do before let's say for a tennis player or for a shooter before they actually aim what what is the kind of routine they follow so we measure those things uh, and we believe that the results will take care of themselves so that's that's the crux of uh, you know uh, our approach at sporting ethos and some athletes will win medals some athletes will take time we've got athletes now who've been working with us for the last 5 years and are doing really well and we are proud of all the athletes who work with us uh you know if you get a medal you feel good uh you know which one of our athletes did at the commonwealth games but there are others who are working really hard and i'm sure uh, that in the time to come you know they will also reap rewards in terms of results but as long as they've got their processes right uh, we are very happy uh so i'm uh, that's about it at my experience is still early days in you know, sport in india needs a lot of work we are still not doing it the scientific way we are getting we did very well at the commonwealth games but a lot of it uh, is still not scientific in nature and that's not understood and it's 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 going to be a uphill climb and you know we are up for it uh, it's been 5 years and it's probably going to take 20 more years and i hope some of you are sports enthusiasts and if you want to do something in this field uh, you know please feel free to connect with me i'll answer some questions now uh, so i've got uh, thanks anup uh, yes uh, i think uh, gold for the country is always good uh, and uh, you know we we as viewers want more uh, but uh, you know once once you know i was just having a conversation with some of my friends early in the morning i mean this is results uh, you know something what we expect but uh, what is more important is the way we develop athletes there has to be a system uh, rather than creating you know exceptional cases coming despite the system in winning medals and that's what we are going to do and uh, thank you for your wishes um 
I think Vivek, I always wanted to start on my own. That was something which was very clear to me for, even when I was at Ahmedabad and before I joined I am Ahmedabad. It was just about finding what I need to do. And, uh, you know, the problems I have talked about, support from the government. Well, I think government has a lot of problems, uh, issues which they are trying to resolve and sport is probably not the highest priority. But, uh, you know, hopefully now we see some kind of movement coming in from the government. It's still early days. Um, I've made a lot of effort uh, which has not counted too much so far. But, you know, uh, you always got to be optimistic and I hope things uh, will change for the better. And... Uh, Future of MBA and sports sciences in India in coming years. So MBA, so this is something which I want to, you know, just clarify. So you have MBA or business in sports management. Uh, so far, sports, there are some dedicated institutions doing management courses and some are coming up, uh, especially in sports. Uh, as of now, most of them, most of the people coming out of sports management courses are mostly doing operations work with leagues and teams. Um, and uh, you know it's still sports management is more about that it's, it's more more than uh, you know just managing leagues and operations which is a good skill set to have but uh, managing athletes that's a very big task uh, you know um, trying to uh, so we have you know we'll have soon in a couple of years uh, even in fact six eight months a role of an athlete manager coming up where you'll be working with the sports science team which is something which i am doing for all our athletes but i would like to delegate that and that's that's a big responsibility and sports science is a different field so you you have to be an expert in sports sciences but yes if you've got the management capabilities you could become a high performance director so apart from being the founder and the management person at sporting ethos i am also looking uh, you know working as a high performance director and my role is to get everyone together, everyone on board, and ensure that the communication is flowing properly. So that's that's the dual role which I play. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Vedant. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it for the questions. If there are any more, I'll be happy to answer them offline. Uh, I hope that's that was useful, that, that was informational. Too much will be uh, information overload. So thank you, guys. Uh, it was an absolute privilege and absolute honor to be talking to you. and. Uh, Wish you all the best uh, for your future endeavors, for your preparations. Remember that one exam is not the end of everything. Uh, you just keep doing what you enjoy, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know you will you will find uh, yeah, more happiness in the work you do. So uh, thank you, thanks Vivek, uh, Rajiv. Uh, life before and after MBA. I've talked about it in the earlier segment, so I'll upload the video. But uh, in life is very different. Uh, I think it's it depends on what your choices are uh, and. Uh, You've got to be a little more open. Uh, you've, you've, uh, while you're working hard, you've also got to sit back at times and look at life uh, overall uh, in terms of you know the other things in life which you need to value. So maintaining a balance is very important, which is difficult uh, even even at this stage. But you know I, I hope uh, we all of you uh, you know get get the correct mix uh, soon, and so do I. Uh, so that's about it. I think uh, it's been it's been again. I would I would again like to thank Kamlesh and Rahul for. Uh, giving me this privilege, giving me this honor, and I wish them all the best. I think they're doing great work to guide, uh, you know, people all across the country, not just Rachi, and, and they've got a, an amazing reach, and I would like to congratulate them for all the hard work they've been doing. So all the best, guys, and uh, uh, any questions, I would... Uh,